Hello and welcome to CHI's ADP training series. Today's training is for managers and supervisors. Today we're going to learn how to track training in ADP. We're going to start by searching for our employee's name. In the right hand corner, click on the search box and type in the employee's first or last name. When the list appears, click on the employee and this will bring you to their employee profile. From here, we're going to go to the top bar and click on People, and then down on the left, Talent Profile. This screen shows you what license and certificates your employees have, as well as what trainings they've taken. Some trainings we require, and we like to track those in the license and certificates so that when they expire, we can easily see it. If this was expired, this would show up in red. Mandated reporting has a requirement of once a year. Narcan has a requirement of once every two years. And CPR has a requirement of once every two years. We track these under the license and certificates. On the other side, we have our training. This would be all trainings that your employees take. So, so far, SpongeBob has taken mandated reporting and food safety. Today we're going to track the CPR class he just took. So we're going to hit this little plus sign next to training. This is going to bring us to a new screen. From here we're going to start with course title. Type in a short description and the menu will appear. If you don't see it you can also hit the drop down button and all the trainings will appear. Find the training that you need and click on it. Subject is how the training was taken. Again, click on the drop down and you'll see all the options. SpongeBob took his CPR training in person, so we're going to select in person. Next, we're going to select the start date. Type in the date that SpongeBob took. Hit tab and it will bring you to the completion date. The start date and the completion date may not be the same if the training occurs over several days. So we're going to also put in the completion date. If there's a grade for the class or training, you can put that here. You can also enter how many hours the training was. Type in a short description of what the training was for. And as you can see, you are able to spell check. I misspelled first, and there's a little red squiggly line. Now I'm going to click on it, and now I'm going to right click, and the menu will come up with the right spellings. Just click on the proper spelling, and you'll see it automatically corrects itself. Now we're going to scroll down and fill in all the other information. Fill in as much information as you have. Was there a course cost? Does this expire? CPR is every two years. So I'm going to put an expiration date in here. Who hosted the training? Where the training was located? If you have a trainer's name, title, and if there's any CEUs. Once you're all done, you can either hit add another training to add another training to this employee, or you can hit done. We're all done with SpongeBob, so we're going to hit done. As you can see, the training appears on his trainings. If you needed to make a correction to a training, it's easy to go in and edit. So as you can see, I entered this as CPR, but we don't do CPR here. We do the CPR with the heart saver. So I'm going to make a correction by hitting the little pencil. This allows me to go back in and make any changes I need to. So since I selected the wrong one, I'm going to type in my short description 
and as you can see, we do the CPR first aid. I'm going to select this, and now I'm going to go back down, hit done, and the correction is made. Let's say you had a training and you could not find it on the list. We're going to again add training. If you search a training and nothing comes up, you may need to add a new training. We're going to add a training by clicking this little button next to course name. First, we need to make a code for it. I like to use the initials of the training's name. Let's say SpongeBob is taking advanced communication writing. We're going to do A for advanced, C for communication, W for writing. Next, we need to put in the description, which is going to be the title of the training. To avoid having to retype this in each of the description boxes, we're just going to highlight it, hit Control C to copy, click on the next description box, hit Control V to paste, click on the next description box, hit Control V to paste, click on the next description box, hit Control V to paste, and now we can either add another new training or we can click Done. Now it pops up under our menu of trainings. Next we're going to select the subject and this was an in-person training, the start date and the end date. How many hours the training took if there was a grade, and a short description. And as you can see, I spelled something wrong. It's letting me know. I'm going to right click and click on the proper spelling. Fill in all of your information. Click Done. And now the new training is added. Next we want to track license and certificates. Since he took first aid and this is one of the trainings that we required, we want to put it on the left hand side under license and certificates. We're going to hit the plus sign to add. And here we're going to search the type of training. So either type in CPR or if you click the drop down menu, you'll be able to see all of your choices. So we'll find CPR. Next, we're going to select the category. Is this a certificate, a license, a membership, or require training? Since CPR has a certificate, we're going to click on the C. And now we're going to put the effective date. Next is going to be the expiration date when the certificate license or require training expires. Hit tab and we're going to go to the renewal requirement. This is going to be how often this training has to be taken. CPR is two years, Narcan is two years, and mandated reporting is yearly. When I'm all done, I can add extra information if I'd like. You can put in comments, you can put the license or certificate number, and you can put the issued by. If you have to add another, click Add Another or click Done. It is important to use the license and certificate because it's an easy way to track when your employees need to have their certifications. As you can see here for SpongeBob, his Narcan is expired and it shows on red. So a quick search will allow you to see which employees need which certifications and trainings. And just like with the training, if you need to change something, all you're going to do is click on the little pencil. You'll be able to go back in and make any changes that you need. When you're all done, you're going to hit done. 
If for some reason you enter information into the wrong employee, you can again change it by clicking on the little garbage pail and that will delete the training. Are you sure you want to delete? Click yes. And you see the Narcan has been removed from SpongeBob. I hope today's training was helpful. And if you have any suggestions for any other ADP videos that you would like, please let the training department know. Thank you so much for joining us today.